What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 62 of the Average AF Podcast. Uh, we're hitting you with the wide-angle lens this time because we got some special guests in-house. What up? Hello. Tim and BJ of the Teach a Dummy Podcast. Welcome. Hey there. Welcome oh. aboard. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> Um, Stand but, down. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you guys for, for coming out. Uh, we appreciate you, and I'm here with uh, Douchebag, too, uh, <laughs> Mr. Baker. Hello! <laughs> That's not nice. You're having us as your guest, and you're calling me a douchebag. Right? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's like that, man. Y'all better get used to it. Hey, it, I, I try not to ease people in, because then they'll get the wrong impression. I got it, I got it. Um, I know but, what you're in for. Right, right. But how you guys been, man? Any... Uh, any updates? Tell them about the podcast, all that kind of stuff. What uh, what you got going on? So yeah, we um, we we kind of just started this thing, and uh, um, we we started it as a I don't know. We were just gonna we were having fun talking to each other about stuff, so we decided eh, you know let's let's right. let's give this a try. And so we were doing some really long form ones where we were kind of doing movie stuff. Yeah, trying to like we were kind of trying to like have a guest on each week and have them teach us basically something, but it kind of yeah. morphed into like just us figuring out what we learned from like the previous week. So that's kind of what we're more geared toward, right. I think. But we're All still right. gonna have some long form ones. Yeah, too. we'll have we'll have a couple of those. Like it, we're we're gonna try to keep in that that hour pocket as well. Right. But even I mean. I didn't want to stop when I the our, our last episode we we were we had my parents on, mm-hmm. and that was kind of my whole goal just getting recording equipment because all I wanted to do was like man I want to I really want to I want my kids to hear these stories but I want them to hear them from like my parents right. and uh, it's because I have all these great stories from like you know my grandparents and my my great aunt and uncle and all that stuff. And it just sucks because I'm never going to do them justice. I don't right. remember them properly. Right. So um, I feel like if I can if I can get them on every now and then, maybe I can get them to tell a few good stories and something that the kids can refer to and can right. show their kids at some point. I like that. So Our, our own version of story time. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. I like it. Yeah, I was, I was actually really excited to see that pop up, and it said, like, the title was BJ's Parents. And mm-hmm. I'm like, this is going to be awesome yeah. just because I've, I've thought about that too. I want to get my dad on, but he's so old school. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just not going to happen. It, he's he's not going to sit in front of a microphone. <laughs> it was <laughs> tough getting my dad to do it. It, it really was. And um, the only way to do it is like, well, uh, your your mom will be there too. I was like, okay. I mean, right. I was I was going to keep it super light too, just as like a first episode. I thought maybe some of those stories would just come out if right. we did our regular version, where it's like, hey, what'd you learn this week, pops? Right. Where we um, kind of just bullshit for. However yeah. long. Right. Yeah. And then when my dad was making it something more, right. I, I got super nervous even before they were there. I mean, if you ever sat down to just like talk to your parents, like long form about right. stuff, yeah. and I, I was all over the place. I, I, I should have had like specific notes to be like, okay, I want, I want to talk about, yeah, well, how'd you guys meet? I, you know, that, that type of thing, just so that I can refer that to my kids. And it just, I, I don't know. I, I felt so weird. <laughs> I, I liked the episode, man, to be honest with really? you. I, I didn't know, you know, what what the purpose was in your eyes or anything, but I enjoyed the episode. Wasn't Thank it you. like over two hours or something? That one ended up being, I, I think once I added in like, uh, you know, the the credits and the music and everything, it was uh, it was probably an hour, half hour, 40, okay. maybe. Okay. An hour and a half, I think. Yeah, okay. The wrestling one was like two hours, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah and with, with Tony. Yeah, that, yeah. that one's like. I got the least views, but I had so much fun doing that just because I, fuck, I, I fucking love Tony. He's, yeah. I, I've known him since ninth grade, and I think we we both we were both. I remember sitting in an English class. Oh gosh, I can't remember her name. Can't remember our English teacher's name then. But it, I forget. I say you're older than me. It wouldn't have been Tyson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, my God. Tyson. oh my we God. had Tyson. That was Shots sophomore fired. year. Okay. Um. Yeah, the Eisen is right. what we called her. Uh. But um. <laughs> I remember sitting there and we had to do this, uh, uh, a report on a song and you had to break down everything and explain, you know, the, the interpretation and all that stuff. Tony did an ICP song. Oh no. <laughs> and then he had to do another report explaining why he chose a song with so much swearing in it. And when he's doing his report, I was belly laughing. I right. could, I was the only one in the, in the room <laughs> laughing, but right from then it's like, we were just best right. friends. I, <laughs> I could definitely see him doing that. I actually met Tony. At he says, Star hi, Tech. by the way, he said you trained oh, him over oh, yeah. at Star Tech. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love Tony. He's such a good dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, we actually just did, uh, 
speaking of story time, I think it was last week's or the week before where I was talking about a speech competition oh, and talking about yeah. our our speech class. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, um, I you know, that. I was cussing and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> during – because uh, we had a teacher, uh, Mr. C, and he was new at the time to mm. Clear Fork. But uh, – and I think he only stayed a couple years, honestly. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about now. Um, he's a super cool guy, and he was all about, like, being authentic and stuff. Oh. And, you know, and he, he preached, like, speak to your audience. Like, figure out who your audience is and make your speech appropriate to that, right? So one of them was an entertainment speech. So I did Daniel Tosh's stand-up, and I did it for, like, it was, like, 12 minutes or something. Dang. Which, and, which album did you do? Um. <laughs> It was, it's completely something. I don't. Oh, completely serious or is, is that what it I is? Think it's something what it's like called. That. Yeah, I don't remember. I just know. Do you remember any of the bits? Can you like? Can you do a whole bit right now? <laughs> no, no. This was. Can you like plagiarize uh, Daniel Tosh right now? Yeah, right, please. This this was a literally a decade ago, but I do remember I said shit a couple times in it, mm. and then the punchline to the last joke, which is what got me in trouble, um, said. Uh, you know, if you do this for me, I'll tell you what a vagina feels like. <laughs> <laughs> and we're 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 eighteen, and yeah, everybody's busting out laughing. And the teacher's aide is my girlfriend's best friend at the time, so I looked at her while I said it because I was in the moment, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I'll tell you what a vagina feels like, and she was like. <laughs> Like, oh, man, it was it was bad. I probably thought it was super creepy that you looked straight at her. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well, it was I was in, getting it was a in little, the moment, man. You can't, I, I was can't get, stop him. I was getting a little specific at that point. Oh, um, my gosh. But uh, being very authentic. Yeah, but he. But my point is, yeah, he gave me a 99%. And I was like, why can't I get 100? And he's Nobody's like, perfect. Well, yeah, and he's like, because <laughs> of the vulgarity and, like, things like that. And I'm like, well, you said speak to the audience. I know my audience. Yeah. I know what's going to make them laugh. You were authentic. And, yeah, me me and my best friend always got 99% on all of our speeches because he's like, I have to take off for something. Mm. Like, or people are just going to do this stuff all the uh, yeah. time. Yeah. I'm can't, like, can't I'll take it. I'll take it. My speech class, um, I went to the Career Center for my last two years. And um, when we had to do our speeches – uh, there was there was a part where they just wanted us to just uh, um, just get comfortable with the speech part of it, and I was already comfortable and I was happy. Right. Then, then I went up there and I did. Um, you guys seen the Warriors? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That beginning speech. Right. I did that whole thing yes. verbatim. Nice. <laughs> Can you count? Right. I did that whole thing. I forget all the ones I did, but dude, I, I had a blast in speech. That's, that's awesome. It. Yeah, that's great. That's a great movie, by the way. Oh, I love that Very movie. Very great movie. Um, real quick too, because I, I'm a fucking squirrel and just get, get off topic all the time. I want to open the show with something because we actually had something happen, I guess, kind of, if you want to say it like that to us this week. We did that. Yeah. That I sent you the picture <laughs> You're of. You're about to find out. And we're blown away about. Oh, um, oh yeah. yes. So sorry. I, I just want to give a shout out to uh, our our Patreon producer Richard Barilli. Yes, Barilli. Yeah, thank you. We just call him Barilli. I, I when I saw Richard, I was like, who the fuck is that? It's Barilli. Um, it but, throws me off when people call him Richard. Right. Yeah, it's so weird. But um, he contributes twenty five dollars a month, uh, oh, yeah. and you know we we appreciate that. But he actually messaged us this week. Um, I think it was like Thursday, Friday, yeah, something like that. And he said, hey, I know you guys are having issues with your camera equipment. You know, like we discussed before uh, before the episode, it turns off sometimes and just other kind of crap and all that kind of stuff. So he's like, what's your guys' PayPal link? So I sent, him, I sent him our PayPal, and he sent us $100. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And he said, he said, you know, I love the content. I'm going to keep putting for 25 a month. Um, but I also want you guys to put this towards a new camera. Yeah. Wow. He even said That's like with awesome. the 25 bucks a month, he's like, I don't, I don't have a small business to sponsor or anything like that. He's like, I don't, you don't have to shout me out or anything. He's like, but I just want the 25 a month for contribution. For, yeah. So wow. That's awesome. That yeah. Awesome. So That's off to him. Man. I, yeah, yeah. Thank you for really, I literally, <laughs> like I still am speechless. I don't, I don't really and know. You're what still going to gonna get a shout out each week. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just what's going to happen. It's happening. Um, and take up the opportunity like these gentlemen did as well, uh, to come on the episode. We'd yes. love to have you on. Um, but 
With that said, too, we are going to try to buy a new camera this week. Um, this week or next week, probably, we're going to take all the contributions from the merch, from the Patreon, and his $100. Um, but the camera that we need to do everything that um, that we, we have to do, yeah, or, like, it's basically not going to work unless we get this camera mm. or a better one, which, obviously, I don't want to do. Um, it's very expensive. <laughs> mm. um, I'm not going to throw the number out because it's a dumb number, but it's very expensive. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is actually we're dropping new merch on Monday for the Patreon members and then on Wednesday for everybody. So when you guys are seeing this episode, there's new merch that, that's coming out. Um, and we're going to take all those proceeds too to get a new camera, put it towards that. And then we will put our Patreon or our PayPal link in the episode description. We don't expect anybody to donate. You know, we're, we're not obviously no pressure. We appreciate you guys just listening or watching or whatever, but it's there. If you guys want to contribute, this would be the week to do it. Um, because like I said, the camera is like way too fucking expensive. <laughs> yes. Um, and you know, we were talking about how like, we have some nice stuff, but I'm in debt, right? Right. I'm going to go into further debt for this camera. <laughs> oh so, my. but it's, it'll it's, be worth it. Yeah. It's kind of necessary <laughs> and it's, it's worth it to me anyway. So, um, but yeah, thank you, but really for your contributions and all that kind of stuff. And we appreciate it. Yes. Definitely check out the new merch. We, we just launched, uh, basically like kind of like graphic tees more or less yep. instead of oh. just our logo. Mm -hmm. Um, there's like, uh, I, I, did you see the designs on the Patreon? I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So there's there's one that's uh we we always say like we're we're the CKO club cool kids mm -hmm. only just cuz I don't know why I've just always said that CKO. It's good um, for marketing. Right. But <laughs> we have we have two two CKO shirts coming out and then we have a shirt um that says the law offices of McElroy and Baker. And it says, we're not lawyers, nor do we want to help. Um, <laughs> but it's, they're, just, they're just funny shirts. They're a little different than just our logo and stuff. Um, so definitely check those out on the, on the merch store right Killing now. Killing it on there, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nice. um, yeah, we, we try to do probably too much, honestly, but I love it. I enjoy it. It's basically everything that uh, any, any extra time I have goes to this, and it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Again, thank you guys for being on the episode. Um, thank you for having us, dude. You are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I know I know you brought some stuff you wanted to talk about, but before we get into that, I wanted to ask you guys because I know you guys just released episode ten. Yeah. Have you guys had? I think Tim has any previous podcasting experience or anything like that. Just just him. Just yeah, him. Just me. Okay. Um, but I I was kind of just um kind of a passenger, I guess, for it. Okay. Um, as I kind of am now, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just to coast. I was wondering I mean, how you felt about that as well. Because huh? I, I, I honestly, like, and I go back and I'm editing and stuff, I feel like I'm driving it. And I, and in, we're definitely co-hosts. And yeah. right. But I, I feel bad sometimes because it, like, I'm it. I'm doing the intros. I'm I'm doing it's this. It's gonna turn like, into a therapy session. It, it can. Hey, it's fine. Got, it's fine. Got to get it out there, man. Right. <laughs> no, but uh, I wanted to know how you felt about all that. I mean, it's your. It was like your idea, and you're paying for everything. So, like. <laughs> <laughs> so you just roll with it. All right, right. Okay. Well, I, I, that's I honestly, I, I, I feel what you're saying there because I kind of feel that way too. Because um, I'm, you know, this is my sixty second episode. Mm -hmm. Baker joined episode fifty, right? Holy shit! It's been twelve episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. You joined episode. No, you joined episode fifty two. Okay. It's been so 10 episodes? That's, still, that's, like, <laughs> right, right, right. that's still, like, two and a half months or something. Yeah, still that's, around the same area. Right. So he's still kind of getting used to it, um, you know, and I I kind of feel like I've taken over some shows and stuff like that, too, but it's just the name of the game sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you just, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah. And But you've also got more of the experience, too. Right. And I... I, I like you said we're we're hosts together, right? But I also feel like you being sixty two episodes in, me being ten episodes <laughs> in, there's a little bit of a difference. But 
I let you kind of take control so I can figure out what the hell I'm still I trying just, to right. do. I just felt like you were probably, you were just getting your wings under you. Yeah, you know? right. Felt yeah, like. that's how I feel sometimes. <laughs> Where did the, the last co-host go? Or um, he, he, uh, We can't tell Steve. you that or we'd have to. <laughs> yeah. no, that's right, bring it, just kill me. No. This is, this is, this is <laughs> true crime, me. if you don't know. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this this is, is actually true a, crime. a true crime podcast. I don't know yes. if you knew All that. good, and we're in. This, this is yes. a real-life murder mystery. <laughs> yeah. We're finally going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is an escape room with no escape, so mm-hmm. uh, I'm still gonna so try. You you oh my God, Adam, why do you have that knife? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't shut the door all the way, did you? <laughs> Don't worry, I locked it. Um, <laughs> Shit. But no, Steve. Uh, me and Steve started this because, uh, similar to what what you were saying, we just have really good conversations mm-hmm. all the time, and we uh, we both kind of think a little deeper than I don't want to say most people, but than most people do kind of publicly. Mm. So I was like, let's just put this, you know, out there and, and see what see what people think. And we started, similar to you guys, like with a, a theme or, or something like that in mind, we did a hip-hop album reviews. Yeah, I heard you Pretty saying much. that on, on one of the episodes yeah, that that's, that's what you were doing. For the first, like, I would say eight episodes, we probably reviewed six albums or so. Um, and then just eventually was like, you know, it's kind of tough to listen to a yeah. full album multiple times and break everything down yeah. every week. Um, so we kind of steered away from that, and then we had guests, and, you know, and it just kind of got away from that. But Steve, uh, going into it, told me that he's only going to do it temporarily, oh. um, which is fine. You know, all the expectations were straight up. He's like, you know, and, and he's a very busy guy, too. He's like, I got other stuff I got to focus on. I'll do it with you, but... He's not a very, like, social media-driven mm. person or anything like that. So he's even like, you know, it's pretty much all you, but I'll be there with you, you know. <laughs> um, but he uh, he started taking uh, music production a little more seriously, oh. uh, making music and stuff like that. So he just told me um, a while ago, probably, you know, like six months before it actually happened, but he's like, I'll go for a year. Um, so mm. episode 52 came around. And uh, we had us two and Steve on for the last time, kind of a handoff type thing. Mm. It was a and smooth transition. Baker, yeah, mm. I we we tried to make it <laughs> as yeah, we smooth had, as possible. We had so many fuck ups that night. Oh man, that was the yeah. night we had so many fuck ups with everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, because we had to record two separate days. Two separate days. Yeah. The the reason it, I kind of spoke about this before <laughs> uh, before we started recording, but the reason we do the video and the audio separately now is because we had so many issues when we did it together with this software. Mm. The audio just, like, didn't come through. It just would be, like, staticky and, mm. like, I don't even know how to describe it. It sounded like... Like we were underwater. Yeah, it, it was like we were underwater, but still good quality. Like, like, but, like good quality. Well, you were under Avion. Right. Like, water, right. Yeah, like right. the Fiji and shit, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? Like, right. they were just dumping it on us. <laughs> it was so weird. But, yeah, basically the, the audio was unusable. And, like, we would record um, the whole episode, and then 25 minutes in, the audio started going to shit. So then we're like, well, it's midnight now. Like, yeah. Yeah. we got to work in the morning. So we had to come back the next day, kind of pick up where we left off. And then we did a... Uh, we did voice submissions to people like, you know, saying bye to Steve and stuff. Oh. And so we recorded the whole first episode. Steve heard all of the voicemails and stuff. Um, and then half of it we couldn't use, so we had to come back the next day and him hear half the yeah. messages again and it still sucked. try to act. So his reaction authentic. wasn't kind of genuine. Yeah, it wasn't the yeah. same. And, like, it was just – it was terrible, man. So <laughs> we're, we're finally on to – the right track. I finally have the right software to edit everything together mm. and things like that. But it's been a struggle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it has been a struggle. Um, but actually, with that said, what what have you guys learned? Just like episode one through ten, um, maybe like an approach difference, a style difference, anything like that. I'm always curious to hear hear that kind of stuff. So, like I like I said, we did start with like the long form, and we wanted like to have specific people on to teach us stuff. Like I have a lot of friends who are in the um, asset protection um, okay. career, and I'd love to have them on because they have hilariously awesome right. stories, right. just <laughs> getting stops and stuff. Um, so I wanted to set all that up, but it, that was getting difficult. And then we were we were thinking about doing long form like that. It's going to be probably once a month or something like that. But then yeah. like there was a good while there. I think it was you know 
COVID stuff and it just right. started to wane and stuff. I'm like, nah, I need, I need like motivation. Mm-hmm. And I talked to Tim about like, why don't we go weekly and just talk about what we learned the previous mm-hmm. week? Cause uh, you can't go through a week without learning something. Right. And then just have people on. And if they do have stuff that they can teach us, let's just let them go. Right. Right. Let it happen. So that that's kind of the, the big change we've had. Of course, there's, there's going to be a lot of stuff like we need, some better equipment we need um like like what we were just talking about before we started recording and stuff Mm -hmm. um everything we have is pretty much secondhand i bought a couple things but uh we want to get better on that part of it so it's smoother right like i I figured out in in the daw to be able to like preset certain things and like okay so i I pick this one we'll record and then i throw that one into a leveling thing so it makes us all sound a little more even and then Mm -hmm. then i plug that into the stuff that i already have pre-recorded yep so compression is a big thing man yeah that's what i've been trying to figure out right (laughs) i don't know a lot about it so So i i didn't either everything everything for me i had to look up on youtube and (laughs) stuff like that like I don't know. I, before this, I didn't know anything about mics or videos or cameras or that's audio. Time, that's time out real quick. Tim, do you do any of that stuff? No. <laughs> See, that's also probably why we let you two drive. Oh, okay. We don't do any of that shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and like, yeah. that's that's a... a I've offered, hu- that, but, like, I don't That's know. a huge, huge, huge responsibility it in is. my eyes. Yeah. And, and in my eyes, that's probably why we give you guys more of the leeway mm. and, and kind of probably lean on you more of a host and let you do more of the things because dude that's a huge control dude it's and it's a lot of work a lot of and uh, this is kind of off topic i mean i guess it's on topic i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about but like it's podcasting is there's so much more to it than people think (laughs) yeah like yeah the 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 problem with it is and it's not really even a problem but people can just like record into their phone yeah. and post it like on anchor and stuff and they're like i made a podcast <laughs> and like yeah. you, you did, did but, but like fuck off like right. you know what i mean so yeah i get it <laughs> and as as far as equipment to be honest with you you guys sound great for being in your 10th episode if you go back and listen to um, our first like episode one through eight or whatever, we had different mics and everything, and like it was not good. It was heavily <laughs> edited and everything like that. So um, I don't know what goes into all the editing that you guys do, but your episodes, I can say, sound way better than ours did for sure. At at this well, point, we, we appreciate well, thank that. You. I mean, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's, that's we're trying to make it sound better than just recorded into a phone. That right. was that was my whole thing mm-hmm. when I told Tim if we're gonna do this. I at least, you know, I don't want to be the guy who's just holding their phone up. Like, right. this is how we're going to do this. Or have one mic in the middle of the table that, you know, I have to do a lot of stuff to make it sound okay. No, I, I mean, um, so, um, yeah, that, that was our whole thing was not to uh, sound like we were recording into phones. Right. Uh, I, I told Tim, if we're going into it, we really want to. Uh, I, I'm like, I'll, I'll invest some money. I'm I'm probably only about... With, with the like donations of stuff like that, uh, Mike Kovacic gave me that board that we spoke right. of that I have that old one that was donated to him. He's like, it was just collecting dust. Right. You know, you can use that for now, and and the other stuff that we do have. Um, I had already purchased a, a mic for um, a singing mic, basically, um, and other stuff because I do I do some music stuff. Um, but so I had so I had some of that stuff. So we basically we started out very basic. Like I think mm-hmm. I had the mic in the, the little like stand that it had on some books or on a right. shoebox or something. <laughs> right. The little uh, crappy stand. Yeah, it comes that with. it comes yeah. with. Yeah. Yep. Um. So that that's kind of what our first couple recordings and we lost a couple that just got yeah. damaged because what what were we using? Um, <clears throat> Audacity. Audacity. Yep. And that corrupted a couple of the files we had. Yep. Uh, Been we, there. Yeah. <laughs> and we we had one recently, which that was the one that. Um, we did cause we started doing like the music review, like our yearly, like, yeah, like yeah. what our lists were and all that stuff. So, um, uh, we did another one for like a mid-year review and I, I thought, Oh, it'd be cool to have Mike in here. Let's do a mid-year music, see what we found mid-year and see if like our top five of changes from now until, you know, the right. end of the year. Right. And that, that whole thing got corrupted and I couldn't. Damn. I couldn't yeah. get that going. That was so. right before we started going weekly. Yeah, right. that was when I just I, That's I talked deflating, to Tim. Man. It really <laughs> is. It sucks. It's happened to us too. Yeah, I I do all my editing in Audacity because that's where I learned. Mm-hmm. Um, so I recorded Reaper, but it. then, yeah, I throw it all over into Audacity. 
um, and then add our intro or outro, and then yeah, just export it. Um, but yeah, man, I I'm a I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist because I'm I'm not a perfectionist, but I do every I do everything like full force basically. So yeah. um, this is kind of become an addiction. <laughs> it's, 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 it's I a mean, problem. there are, there are worse things that you could be addicted right. to. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, very true. Um, yeah. The, the nice thing is this doesn't harm anybody except my bank account <laughs> and, um, it's a form of self harm, I guess. Right. Probably. Right. Self sabotage. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. Um, and, and we even told people like before Baker confirmed that he could be the co-host and we knew Steve was leaving. Um, I was like, you know, I'll do this by myself mm-hmm. if I have to. And I recorded one solo episode. Did yeah, you that watch was, it? Yeah, I did. Uh, it was weird, man. <laughs> it was so weird. Because I mean, you didn't have like the best, I don't know, topic to gauge it from. Well, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I did, I did basically a solo episode, uh, talking about everything that goes into the podcast and, nice. and things like that. Just, and I just put it on the Patreon. Eventually I put it out on YouTube too, but um, it was just, it was weird because I have to talk yeah. to people who are yeah. not here. Right. You know, I'm looking at a camera and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, and you guys know that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is so weird. Like <laughs> I'm in a room by myself and talking to nobody. <laughs> yeah. It's, talking to people about future events that haven't right. even happened yet. Right. And... Right. It's, it was so messed up. So <laughs> messed up. Um, but Tim, I don't know if we got into what what you learned uh, from the podcast so far. Um, what I've learned, man. I mean, I I, I kind of knew this because like we did a, I was uh, involved with a, a podcast, a sports podcast before this called uh, "Don't Stop Believing" with. Um, I love that name. Yeah, I thank love you. That it's a good name. It's yeah, it's great. Um, it's the best part about the podcast. No, <laughs> real, right. real quick, bo- before you go into this, were you guys like picked up by like a radio station? Networks. Or we had, we, yeah, we were a part of like a couple podcast networks. Okay. Um, and we did actually get like paid for it eventually. Nice. Like, we got like sponsors and stuff. That's awesome. We Hell felt yeah. like we were stealing from them. But <laughs> well, right. I, I still feel that way. So uh, yeah, I feel you. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Um, cause that's like one of my favorite things to talk about. So, um, but yeah, just kind of our schedules didn't line up, so we right. just kind of ended it. But um, did you do all the? He does all the uploading, and he he I, deals yeah, with that I whole part of it. Usually deal with right like now. the social media aspects. Okay. Yeah, he's been doing really well with that. I mean, I <laughs> I post stuff on our Facebook, <laughs> but I mean he, the right. upload part. I'm, I'm glad he's doing that because that's just something I don't have to worry about. Right. I'm happy to, you know, I'll, I'll buy the stuff. I'll I'll edit it. I'll do all of that and send it to him, and then uh, so I can just. I'm right. Like, yeah, right. you know, <laughs> I, like, did, my I did my part. I'm right. done. This is all on Tim now. Right. Yeah. Um, and then another thing I would say that we kind of struggled with and had to learn from is trying to trying to explain things to the audience because we have right. like inside oh, jokes gosh. and like right. that, and that part gets. I feel bad because I because we know each other so well yeah, that we right. know what we're talking about, but right. we don't understand. Sometimes yeah. we forget that they uh, the audience doesn't. So. Right. Well, we had some some people give us like some, some good feedback on things. And there was times where it's like when I had stuff written down, so like we, I made sure I was explaining stuff and I'd have like just like basic cliff notes and stuff going through that. I used to like actually write out an intro and I liked doing that because it was just a form of, you know, getting that creativity out. Right. And it was kind of fun to try mm-hmm. and write something. But then I was told that that sounds too scripted and I'm like, okay, so I tried to pull it back a little, still sounds scripted. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, we'll just go into like what our normal conversation is. And they're like, well, you didn't explain this. I don't know what this is. <laughs> right, I'm like, right. I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, it's all good feedback and everything, but it's like, what do you want? Uh, yeah. Right. What, right. I, I don't know <laughs> how it to. so difficult. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. I'm like, I don't know where that sweet spot is. And Tim's good at, at that to rein it in. He's like, uh, yeah, what he's talking about is this. Like, right. I'm trying to like, be crap. better at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, and and we've we've gotten a lot of feedback and stuff too, and I don't I don't know how to say this without sounding like a douche, but like <laughs> like we we love feedback and we'll listen to it and we'll we'll take it to heart and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like we've gotten to a point now to where we kind of know what we're doing yeah. to mm-hmm. some extent, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. what we want to talk about and how we want to go about it. So we'll still take feedback, obviously, if. If you think the camera angle shit or something like that yeah. or whatever, um, or if you say like we don't explain stuff or mm-hmm. you know we'll we'll take the feedback, but at the same time, like we've gotten to a point to where we know 
kind of what we want our show to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And as far as structure wise, the right. Right. The feedback and you're not really. It, mm-hmm. it sounds like at least from listening, you guys are, are on that track too. I don't know how, how you guys feel about it, but um, listening to it, it sounds like a professional podcast. Um, and, and that I really, very nice. <laughs> and that feels, we're going to need a minute. If okay. you don't, if okay. you don't. <laughs> we can officially okay. retire from yeah. podcasting. Yeah. Now. We're done. <laughs> no, it, it sounds good, man. I, I like your guys' stuff. Um, I listen every week. Uh, I've oh my listened gosh, to thank you. That's, that's every nice. single episode. And I'm pretty sure every single second of the, every episode in that what? weird, in that that's weird, weird. in that weird to hear we've had, I've had people tell me they've listened to all 61 episodes. And I'm like, do something with your life. Yeah. Like, no, not really. Like, I appreciate Keep you guys listening. listening. No, we're, sorry. Yeah. we're sorry. Please. Keep yeah. listening. But, uh, but then other people are like, man, I'm I'm like five behind, and I'm like, it's easy to do, right? Mm. Especially if you're if you're putting out a consistent hour a week. Yeah. And I like that. I like that people are falling behind. Yeah. And mm. I'm like, that makes me feel good because like you can't keep up with me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. But. That- that and like you're worried about it, you know, right. like like mm-hmm. oh man, I got to catch up. Like, right, right. It's it's awesome. Um, but yeah, anything anything else as far as the podcast you guys want to talk about? Do you have any questions for us before we get into um, what you brought to talk about? Um, well, one, I always thank you for having us on, and this was just super interesting. Just talking, like even before we started, we we went over kind of just some of the different things, and you've already helped. Okay. In explaining because the, the the mic you're using, I have, and why mine probably right. isn't sounding as good as the way the way you guys sound. And I just thought of something, what? like the like talking about equipment earlier, like what we were doing. It's like a podcast's um, comparison to like measuring dicks. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Oh, you got the pod right. mic. Look at this guy right, right here, the right. big dangling pod hey, mic. Hey, I had to work for this. Um, I'm already. I've been in puberty for like six years. It's now. all within time. Right. All in time. Right. Right. You guys. You guys will get there. Believe me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but we we are uh, really enjoying it. So uh, yeah, it is. It's Teach a Dummy podcast. You can follow us on uh, the social media. Uh, yep. Any of the social media. Just look up Teach a Dummy podcast. We don't do the video thing. Um, I don't think we ever, w- I don't know if we ever will. It's not maybe. Yeah. I, I'm just never I'm, say uh, never, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, and we just finished, uh, I just finished editing our, uh, our first bonus episode, nice. which was, uh, we made Tim sit down and actually watch all of the matrix because yep. he'd oh, never nice. seen it. So nice. we did a cool thing. Uh, uh, Sam Dunham from uh, nerd overload podcast. He's awesome. And, uh, he has uh, a thing that he does on, on his podcast with one of, uh, his friends, like, like a sidecast. Like, so, yeah. And he, um, a guy who's, uh, seen a bunch of cult movies, but hasn't seen like mainstream movies. So they make him watch it. And what they do is they talk a little bit about it before and then they go watch it and then they, um, right. come back and talk about it. And mm-hmm. that, that was a lot of fun. And it was, yep. and that one was really easy to edit. It's a lot, a lot faster. And for the break in between, what I did was I, I grabbed the audio off of a YouTube video of the original trailer for the matrix. So we go to watch, we go to watch it and then it plays the whole audio of the trailer and nice. then right back into us. And it came out really cool. Oh. I was, I was really excited with that was awesome. to, to figure that out that I love doing that. I'm like, Oh right. man, this sounds so cool. This right. came in like that. So, and the whole thing when I posted about trying to edit a little bit, try to edit out any of the swears and stuff like right. that, just cause I don't know. At, at some points, um, Oh, it, it was Andrea was talking to me about that. And she had said, uh, she's like, hey, just so you know, um, if somebody had come in, it like it kind of came in hearted. Like you didn't know that it was that type of podcast. Mm-hmm. And then like there was, you know, we started swearing. And she's like, you know, that, that just so you know, that could turn some people off. Right. Or if you, uh, she's like, you know, you could try to censor it. I'm like, oh, I never, it, like when she right. said that, I'm like, that'd be fun to try. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, in, in the DAW I have, it has a bunch of loops and stuff you can mm-hmm. grab. Because you can make music and stuff in it as well, uh, which I used. I don't know if I told you guys, Studio One right. is what I yep. use. Um, but I found a record scratch one, and mm-hmm. I took a piece of that, and whenever I'd, I'd, I'd zoom in really far on it, and yep. I'd find where it starts, so it's set, it, and you'd say, fuck, it, it, you'd, you'd hear the F, and then it would go ret- right. record scratch. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. This is kind of fun. Right. I like doing Let this. Me so keep going. Like, Let me keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I don't know, at some point, I, I don't know, maybe we can get more viewership and stuff if we are a little more censored that right more people are comfortable listening to it. i don't know it's right no i i get it we that was some of the feedback that that we got as well um especially at the beginning with me and steve mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah bad some language uh 
But we we decided to not censor because we wanted to be authentic to ourselves. Yeah. Um, and like for example, like my mom was listening for a while. I don't know if she still does. Probably not. I I've said some things, <laughs> so probably not. And uh she's like, You guys gotta like stop cussing <laughs> like so much. And I'm like no, like it's, it's you know that's yes. us, and she's like, well, uh, people people might stop listening, like you said, and I was mm. like, bye, like yeah. you know, sorry, uh, but yeah, and and it's all preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Yeah, I, yeah. I absolutely understand the censoring and all that kind of stuff, but especially with my mouth, like yeah. I don't want to invest yeah. that time. No, but, yeah, if, if you're so other comfortable, <laughs> right? And then if you're so comfortable in it, there's no reason to stop, right? And I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think in our general speech, we don't swear too much. I mean, I, I, I hang do. around. Ton of, I it depends on, maybe it a depends couple on an who episode. It, it sounds yeah, like maybe yeah, but there's, uh, I mean, depends on who I'm around. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> depends on who I hang around. Right. Uh, I'll swear more, but, but it was just, I don't know. Maybe we can get some more ears on it. Right. I don't know. Right. Like, like I said, there's, there's no right or wrong answer to it. You know, <laughs> anybody can, can do whatever they want. You yeah. know, that's the glory of podcasting is you can have have whatever kind of show you want. It's yeah. it's great. All right guys, a little break in the action here to shout out our Patreon producers yes, and sir. our small business sponsor. Uh first we'll start with the producers. I'm gonna try to remember off the top of my head. Do it. Because I didn't do it. Look. Do it. I believe we got Teach a Dummy Podcast who's yes. on today. Hoping you're enjoying that so far. I'm sure you you are. Uh I am. <laughs> uh Steve, Sarah, Nate, Tom. That's five, right? I think so. Taylor. Oh man, who's the last one? They're gonna get upset at me. But really? Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about Barilli. I can't yeah. forget about Barilli. Not Barilli. You guys know why. You already heard it at the beginning of the episode. Yes. Um, but yeah, to speak on that just real quick, we are <clears throat> investing in a very, 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 very expensive camera this very week. Very expensive camera. Yeah. Um, but hoping we are going to uh, avoid some of the issues that we've had on recent episodes and things like that. Yes. Um, but shout out to Barilli for donating an extra hundred dollars to the cause. Thank you very much, Barilli. That's insane. Still speechless. Still don't know what to say about yes. that. Other than the fact that we appreciate you and we're going to continue to shout you out. Yes. Even if you don't want it, um, you got it. But yeah, if you guys are interested in also donating to the cause, the PayPal links below. Yes. Um, you can buy some merch. This is the new hoodie. Uh, the Red Bull's in the way, but new hoodie. Love it. Uh, fantastic. Super comfy. And then we do have the uh, original hoodies as well. Yes. Um, t shirts dropping, things like that. Brand new merch, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So check so it out. Check it out. And, uh, Hopefully next week or probably the week after, honestly, we'll have a new camera and, uh, you know, everything's going to be so much better. Absolutely. Uh, but we couldn't do it without you guys, all of our listeners, um, all of our Patreon producers. All your support. Um, and then also our small business sponsor, uh, Brewbaker Photography. B-R-U-B-A-K-E-R. Hey, there you go. Do you remember their URL on Facebook? We've only said it a hundred times. The Brew Baker Photography One. Yep, absolutely. Boom. So, Facebook.com slash Brew Baker Photography One. Uh, definitely go like their page, share their pictures. Yes. Um, all that kind of <clears throat> stuff. They're just trying to spread some positivity in uh in the shitty times right now. So yes. um so yeah, definitely give them a like, give them a share, um, Check them all out. that kind of stuff. But Support them because they are supporting us. Yes. Um, and it's a massive Share deal. Share the love. Yeah, we can't thank them enough. We can't thank our Patreon producers enough. We can't thank all of our Patreon members in general enough. And we can't thank the listeners enough. And our viewers. Um, and the viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Every single person uh, that wastes their time listening to us. And you know what, Adam? I can't thank you enough. Oh, you're so sweet. Just since we're on the topic. Yeah. Well, you don't thank me, so you could start. Well, I just did. <laughs> I got nothing back. All right. Well, uh... Back to the action. Thanks, man. <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, I, I appreciate you and, and your commitment to the to the show. Yeah, thank and, you. And uh, we appreciate you guys for listening and all that kind of stuff. Continue to um, keep it up. Yes. Thank you, guys. And... <clears throat> Back to the action. 
But yeah, do you want to you want to get into the topic? Yeah. You oh, brought? yeah. I yeah. I I brought something just because you guys talked about. I thought the red light stopped. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. It was a couple episodes ago when you brought up you you read a quick little like excerpt of um. Uh, this is millennials, and this is this is where they've been. This is where they're going, and this mm-hmm. is, these are the positives about it. And it got me thinking. I'm like, oh man, I, w- I saw this. Um, I, I went to a convention, and there was a we there was a guest speaker, and, and his name was Phil Gwoki from uh, Bridgeworks, um, and the, he was th- their generation experts. All right. they do is discuss the generations and everything. So I found my notes on that from that. Um, when I when I went to that convention, and I'm like, oh, this would be kind of cool. I, I think you guys would get something right. interesting out of this. So uh, th- they basically started by talking about um, what the generations are. So um, if you were born before 1946, you're considered a traditionalist. That's that generation. They, they don't quantify anything before that because there's none left. Really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the baby boomers were uh, born in 46 to 64. Obviously, that is because of coming home from World War II. Mm-hmm, there right. was a big, uh, there was kids being born every eight seconds uh, for, That's I forget insane. how many years. For years, yeah, it was right. like every eight seconds. That's why there's so many. Uh, then next is Gen X, which is 79. Yeah, my sister's in that. So 65 to 79, you're considered Gen X. Uh, millennials or Gen Y were uh, 1980 to 95. And then Gen Z, or they call Gen Edge, or something, uh, but it's it's Z. The and ones that don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1996 to they don't know yet. It, right. it hasn't been quantified yet. So those are the actual generations that are that are out there right now. Right. And what's really cool is in in the room that we were at for this, there was one dude who was a tra- traditionalist, and it was it was the ARA convention for equipment rental. So this guy had been running this business forever, and after this this presentation from this guy, he stood up and he just told the guy, he's like, Hey, I've been doing the, I've been coming to these for 40 years and you are the first, like, this is like the best thing I've ever heard. I can take this back and apply it to my business right. immediately. Right. Cause the whole thing was um, centered around, okay, these, these are your generations and this is how you can market to them. This is how you can hire these people. And this is how you can retain these people. And he went through each generation how to do that so just real quick some of the inter uh, um interesting things the, the way they study it is for each generation they study um uh in those years that you were born they study your formative years so mainly your teen years right okay what happens in those teen years are the things that stick with you and those are the things that technically shape a generation for who they are how they think and what they do Right. I could see there's a Makes lot sense. of shit that happens in your teenage years though. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I can see why they would choose that. I mean, a, you can I mean, what's the biggest thing that would have happened in our teenage years? We all remember one specific thing, mm-hmm. 9/11. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the one th- I mean, that right. is a big thing and that can form that formed a way a, a, the way we thought of a lot of things and right. the way we thought of afterwards. Well, yeah, so even sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, no, you're fine. but even in, if you were at the beginning of that in 1980, uh, you know, when nine eleven happened, you're 21. You're still yeah. growing. You're not. Right. Yes. You're far from. And there's a whole thing. You, he yeah. does talk about that too. They're called like, I forget what they they had a specific term for people who are right on that edge of each generation, right. um, and, and and that can be different because I'm considered an early millennial. I was born in '84. Right. So I'm right at the beginning of it. Um, uh, but uh, so uh, just going through it. Uh, so for the boomers, just some interesting things that he was talking about that was uh, uh, boomers generally only had traditionalist parents. They didn't have, mm, there wasn't too many of them that had the generation before. So a lot of it is defined by the generation your parents are as well for how you're raised, such as, you know, my, my parents were in that late, well, they were mid boomer type stage. So I still got locked out of the house. (laughs) Uh, I'm thirsty. Drink from the hose. It's out there. You're not (laughs) coming in this house. You know, that we were raised different because of what generation your parents were. So um, they were also taught that uh, above average is average reason being. So imagine a generation where it's uh, you're a a kid's born every eight seconds, right? So that's a ton of people. A lot of competition. Exactly. You go to the job market, you're all in that job market area. There's the, the unemployment was ridiculous because there were right. so many people. So not only did 
boomers, what they would do, you, you know, they would arrive an hour before the boss got there. They, right. they knew they had to work harder. So they turned like a 30, 40 hour work week into a 60, 70 hour work week. Right. Thank you. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we've, we've all heard the phrase. If, if you're on time, you're late, and, Yes. you know, and that all and they, came from they embodied parents. it. Yes. Yeah. They embodied that because they didn't have a choice. If you didn't do that, you didn't have a job. Yeah. Right. There were so many people in line waiting to take that job. So, right. uh, so I, it made me think a little bit different just about my parents and their right. work ethic and right. stuff as well. Um, uh, they're competitive and optimistic because they, they came in there. They were in the, you know, the flower power years and all that right. stuff. They were looking toward the future and all that. If you get, uh, you go into the Gen X, which had late traditionalist and early boomer parents. Uh, that's the first generation of latchkey kids. Um, they get left. Uh, they got left alone a lot more. They, right. th- the, the free loving parents and they were working so hard. That was the first generation that had, two working parents. Right. So Gen X, the the first latchkey kids, you had to go home and do that. You had MTV turn, you know, yep. turn on, tune in, drop out. Yep. You had, I mean, it was all very, um, what was the specific word? Uh, they were, it was a lot of on your own. They were very skeptical and independent. Right. Mm. It was the first generation that had a 24 hour news cycle as well. Mm. So it's all in your face constantly. Yeah. Right. You, you see all the, the things from start to finish. You see politicians taken down. You see all of these things, all this corruption, everything. It's not that it wasn't there in generations before. Now you see it every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Now you right. have access to it. So it made that a very skeptical generation. Think of it back then in the Gen X years. If you're, your formative years are in your uh, 80s, early 90s, um, you're, you're talking grunge. You're talking, you know, just in the music scene, there's a lot more skepticism Mm -hmm. um so uh and it's since they became so independent because of all that uh their their whole motto was you know if if you want something done right do it yourself right and that's if you see a lot of people in that generation they they do do it that way i i run on that cusp because there's there's a whole nother thing coming for millennials and gen z that that um, that made so much sense to me when he started talking about millennials it like it was insane like like he just drew Drew me perfectly. <laughs> um, so in the millennials, we have late boomer parents and Gen X parents. So, um, and we get the most bad press of any. So yeah, you yeah, just we do. absolutely. That's right. And if you look, if you go online and you just Google millennials, you'll see, you know, lazy, this, that, right. and the other, not the truth. And he, he was, he was very good. I, I highly encourage everyone to just jump on YouTube and, um, you can, I, I think, what did I do last night to find it again? It was almost like, almost the identical one. Somebody had uploaded for, uh, it was like a big company who had got this guy to come and talk. It was almost verbatim the one that I saw. Uh, his name is Phil Gwoki. It's called Bridgeworks. Uh, look both those things up and you can find it. it was a, there was a four-part one. It's an 80-minute seminar. It's just fascinating. Right. Just everything he goes through is really interesting. That's That stuff would be awesome to listen to. I'm probably going to YouTube that tonight. Yeah, and if you go to, uh, if you just look up Brid- Bridgeworks um, as a company, you can ha- you can get on an email chain. They'll text you stuff, all that right. stuff. It's been interesting. They'll, they'll have an article that right. comes out that's interesting. They'll send it to you. And honestly, it's all been a good read so far. Right. I usually don't do that stuff, but this stuff has right. been super interesting. I, I want to I touch real quick on the fact that... Um, you know, we we get the the worst rap yeah. of of any generation. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if you guys saw it, probably, but on my Facebook, like after that episode came out where we were talking about it, I kind of I tend to vent on Facebook a little <laughs> too much, <laughs> um, just because like I'll either say it on here or on Facebook, <laughs> right? And I was like, I'm so sick of everybody saying like millennials are lazy and like they're the problem and all this kind of stuff. And like I mapped out stuff and I'm like, you're talking about Gen Z. Like you're, you're talking about the, the generation after us. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that they're lazy or whatever, but like the, the stuff that, that they're They're referencing. Yeah. 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 You're referencing stuff to not us. Like (laughs) what the, the youngest, the youngest millennial right now is what? Like 25. 90, 95, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah like, 25. like the youngest millennials, 25. Like, you're talking about TikTok and things like that. Yep. Like, there might be a couple of Social influencers and yeah, stuff like, like that. Yeah, like, you're talking about the generation after us. And there's not anything wrong with them per se, but I'm like, right. stop saying millennials. <laughs> like, please. Well, and it's, it's, I mean, it's 
one of those things where it becomes a hot button word. Whereas like most of the millennials are trying to get people to say zoomers so that oh, <laughs> yeah. they get off of right. us. But, um, actually uh, I can give you some stats that will just kind of, you'll be a little more sympathetic to right. Gen Z. Um, so just going into millennials, um, so, uh, average age right now is 18 to 35 is, is, um, where the millennials are. So a couple quick facts about that. I was just, I, I took pictures of the slides and stuff okay. so I could reference them. Um, uh, da, 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 where's the ones about that? 92% of millennials rely on referrals. There's, there's some, this, there was a lot of stuff geared towards that. Um, but with millennials, we don't, we spoke a little bit before we started this, how none of us has stayed at a job more than what, five years. Right. There's a reason for I that. Have. <laughs> Shut I up, have Tim. Right. twice. <laughs> <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, both of <laughs> you. Just, just once. <laughs> just once. But what, what happens is if we're not looking, if we're, we're constantly looking for that next thing, if there's something better oh, that yeah. comes 100%. along, I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. Right. J uh, you know, the boom, uh, the boomer generation didn't do that. They're they all loyalty. Yep. Yeah. Which is cool to have, but right. like, at but the same time, like you got to treat me right for yeah. me to be loyal to you. And so you can be loyal to a fault. Right. Yeah, for sure. So a couple uh, a quick things um, just a, just on that part of it. Uh, when asked what the right amount of time to stay at a single role before being promoted or moving to another, uh, about two thirds of millennials said less than two years and a quarter said less than 12 months. If we don't I see would say a year and a half or yeah, so, yeah, year and a half. If I don't see the next level and how I can get there, I'm gone. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. moving on. I've, I've talked about that a lot on the podcast. Cause like, um, right now I've been with this company for a little over a year and I've taken on like three different roles within this company just because I want more yep. kind of more responsibility, yep. learn more and things like that, because I do want to move up and they've already talked to me about potentially moving up and things like that. So that's why I'm still here. And mm -hmm. I, I love my job. I'm not going to, you know, bash it or anything. But before that I was at a job for four years and that's because I moved up every like nine months. Mm -hmm. And then before that, like I, the longest I'd ever been at a job was like literally I think 15 months because I do it. I get really good at it and then be like, okay, well there's nowhere to go from here yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the next one. Yep. Exactly like what you said. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that, like I said, he makes sense. He paints you to a T. It's right. so good. 71% of millennials who plan to leave their employer in the next two years are unhappy with their leadership skills, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the way their leadership skills are being developed. Yep. And it's and it, it, the main thing that he was talking about in this is like, Hey, you want to retain millennials who are in the workforce now. And it's, um, uh, you have to have good leaders. Yeah. You yeah. have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've, we've talked about that too. And yep. I think we have a, a topic that we wanted to talk about. We're probably going to save it for the next episode, but it has to do with that as well. Mm -hmm. Leadership is the most important thing, at least in my eyes. Like I will work for somebody harder and better and longer if they treat me with respect and mm -hmm. like, you know, and be, show that they know what they're doing. Yeah. And, and be a, a good leader um, and I'm sure everybody's heard this too, but, um, being a leader instead of being a boss, yep. you know what yes. I mean? Yep. Hell yeah. There's, there's a big difference. In there's that. a huge difference. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in the position I'm in right now, I'm not going to say it, but, um, I, we just lost, uh, one of our, um, yeah, one of our supervisors and sh I'm not going to like bad mouth him too much, but it was not a pretty sight. She was not a great leader. Right. Um, which kind of trickle down trickles down to the rest it of does. your staff. So yeah. like, it does. once you get somebody that you know you can see knows what they're doing, it's a, just a totally different atmosphere. Right. Well, yeah the the last job I had before this, I worked in a factory, and I've talked about this like at nauseum on the podcast. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I would work seven days a week, fourteen hour days, um, and have to like basically beg for a day off. Mm -hmm. Um, like I was working, um, max 92 hours a week, oh my um, gosh. and minimum at least like 80, wow. but I was getting overtime and stuff. Yeah. So the paychecks were great, mm -hmm. but there, um, they're all old school. They were, uh, you know, the generation before us and stuff. And the best way I describe it to people is they were yell first to ask questions later. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they, they came to me and was like, how do you get your team to 
do what what you say without any pushback or anything like that. And I'm like, because I level with them and I talk to them like yeah. a person. Mm-hmm. I'm you like, hey get man, to know them. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like, hey man, what happened in this situation? They're like, well, this happened and then this broke, but then we had to do this. And I'm like, all right, well, next time we got to do this and this and this. Cool, end of conversation. Instead of coming in hot yeah. and throwing a grenade on everything, <laughs> mm-hmm. and yep. then everybody's pissed off at you because the machine broke, and it's like nothing that they did wrong, and it's just, it's all bad. So leadership leadership there, like like I said, I was making good money and about 40 to 50 hours of overtime a week, yeah. and I left it because of the leadership there, well, because specific- I was around them. Specifically, like uh, one of their polls, 75% of millennials will take a pay cut to work for a socially responsible company. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Facts. Can, yeah, it's yeah. definitely facts. Yes. Yeah, so that's, I mean, it's it's all super interesting. And one, one of the other things that he that he touched on that was super interesting for that was uh, the fact that, okay, so there was there's always been technological change in any um, uh, generation, right? Mm-hmm. So, but it came so much slower. I remember getting a VCR. I do. I remember when we've got our first, Uh uh, we had a Betamax and we got a VCR. I remember that. But I had that VCR for 10 years, something stupid, right? And everything was still VHS. You you get to a point where the Macintosh comes out in 84. And then right from there, I mean, it was, it was, all systems go, man. Right. You, you got to the, once you got to the iPhone, and now we're we're looking at techno technological improvements on here every year. So right. what the big difference with you know having change and everything is the rate of change that our generation is dealing with. Right. Everything is coming at us so fast. Yep. Nonstop. New phone every two years. I mean, right. updates every day on your current phone. Right. We're dealing with a different rate of change, which changes our perception on a lot of things. We're right. expecting different things as well. Right. And, and that's why a lot of them are getting, you know, imp- that's why we, we're seen as impatient and stuff right. like that. We're, we're just so used to, like, what's the next best thing? Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I, I think the, the fine line, though, is we did grow up with not as much technology. Mm-hmm. So we've we've been on both sides of the fence. We yeah. we kind of saw it coming into play and things like that. Um, and like you said, like I played outside. I lived in the country, um, so I wasn't really allowed to go inside until dark. You know, mm-hmm. not until the lights come on because there's no lights. Yeah, but I wasn't even in the country, dude. And I was the same way. I was out riding my bike. Yep. right until the yeah. street lights I, came on. I was shooting basketball until I couldn't see the backboard and yep. then I yep. had to yep. go inside yep. you know what I mean and yep. playing in the woods and stuff like that but I loved it right it oh, was absolutely great. it was great but we we did that growing up and then in our you know formative years depending on how old you are the internet started coming out and getting more mainstream and uh, the AOL discs and all that kind of stuff love video AOL. game <laughs> right. video game consoles right, right. Do you um, guys' as parents still have AOL like uh, email as my mom addresses? did Both until, my parents do until not too long ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but mine I do not. That I'm aware of. Right. No, I'm oh, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents, yeah. Um, an- another interesting thing. This was a big thing with uh, just just business wise, but mil- and there was an actually I was explaining this to my wife the other morning on on the news. It said, "Hey, why is there a housing shortage? What's going on here? This, that, and the other." I'm like, I can tell you exactly why. Uh, millennials have ta- overtaken Gen Z, uh, Gen Xers as the largest segment of home buyers. So what's happening? Uh, he even explained this uh, as where well. he's like, "Okay, so you're going to have because he, he's, it was very prudent to the to the rental industry. People are uh, our generation is done. We're done with the city life. We're done going out every night of the week. We're to the point of mm-hmm. I want to own something." Right. Yep. We're all buying houses now. So, I mean, I've had my house longer, but uh, most of my friends are, are now purchasing houses. And houses are going for way above asking. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, it's it's just insane. Like, uh, two two doors down from me, those, those neighbors were moving out. They had one open house. They had seven offers, four above asking. Right. Damn. One open house. Right. And that's that's what's happening. So, Dad, there's and a there's a housing shortage. People want to move to the suburbs and stuff now. Also, what what accelerated that? COVID did. Yeah. Mm. Most people, a lot of people who moved into where one of my stores down in the Springboro Dayton area, they're get we're getting a lot of customers from New York. Wow. Who had moved out yeah. and left. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff like that going on as well that that we're dealing with in, in the, right. this age we're, we're done. We're ready to have that right on the flip side. You have um, like, if you go to the Gen Z's, um, I was wondering if I had something else on there. Oh, 28, uh, 
in the workforce now, 28% of millenn- 28% of the workforce uh, millennials are in the manager role and in 48% uh, of millennials are in the director role. Nice. Shit. Which wow. in my, in my, That's a lot. In my position, I would be considered a director. I think <laughs> when I was looking at this and we were looking it all up, I was like, it's like, that's interesting. Yeah. And right. most of my superior, I think my boss is younger than me too. He's probably a millennial. And then, yeah. So there's, right. it was interesting to try and trace things back and see. Now and that, uh, yeah, now that I look at it though, like my manager is like a year or two older than me, I think. Mm-hmm. And then the director is like right in our age range too. Yeah. Like, I was, shit. I was going to say, I know, um, for the last, like, we'll just say 10 years of like my work experience, I've been in a management or supervisor role, trainer role, something like yeah. that for like five or five or six of those years yeah. since I've been 18. Mm-hmm. And I know for you, it's, it's been, been like, like seven or eight of the yeah. last 10 years. Yeah. Um, I mean, ever since like, I'd say at least in my twenties, right? I think that's when I grew into the whole. I'm not going to settle just for an entry level right. yeah. anything. And, and it was like, how could I, what do I do to go yeah. up? And yep. this is this is the first job I've had in, like I said, probably five or six years that I'm not in any type of role like that. Um, but the pay was great. The Like you said, the um, I did take a little bit of a pay cut because I wasn't getting overtime from the last job. So I actually gave up my supervisor status <clears throat> for a lower paying job in a better culture, in a yeah. better environment. Um, but within this, like I said, I've taken on two other roles too. So like, I'm not, you know, I'm not just being that entry level person. There's nothing wrong with that. But just for me personally, I can't stay at that entry level spot. Oh, yeah. Like, like you're saying. And this and is, this is the first time I've, I've gotten hired in at non-entry. Right. At oh, my, okay. my current job. And then within a year after being there, I get promoted into a seasonal supervisor. So I started as a lead, like right under the soup. And then within a year, they promoted me into a supervisor role, but we're, like we're a temporary. We're all young too. You, yeah. you said you're 35, right? Yeah. And you're the oldest one here. I'm 28. There's a seven year difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just what we've talked about, listening to your guys' episodes and stuff like that, we've all had. It sounds like five, S- six similar, yeah. plus years of management skills, yeah. and we're all 35 or under. Yep. Like that's yeah. that's. Crazy. unheard of for the generation before us. My, uh, I had a teacher at the career center who, who just brought to my attention at some point I was, you know, I was at McDonald's when I was in high school. I, I closed every Friday, Saturday, Friday and Saturday night. And he just brought to my attention. He's like, do you like you ever drive around just, you know, at night, after, after 6 PM, look at all the businesses. Children run every business. Right. After a certain time, because everybody else has gone home and they right. train like the younger kids to run. It's like, yep. if you're going out, you know, Taco Bell after 6 p.m., it's, they're kids. They're, right. they're all kids. Because right. the parents are so used to like those yep. nine to fives and the yep. whole. Somebody's yep. got to close. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We kind of talked about that that one time too. Like, you know, the difference between parenting, like our parents parenting us and us parenting our kids. Like, right. my parents both, like, we had dinner at 6 30 every single night. Yep. Monday through Friday, even on the weekends. Right. Like, it's impossible in my house. Shit, like, my fiancé can work anywhere between 9 a.m. and 11, or 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., and I work second shift, two to whenever. Like, there's no way in hell we're having dinner at a certain right. time yeah. every right. single the, night. The, like, the family dynamic has changed. It's crazy. It, it, yeah, it's incredibly different. Uh, l- let me give you a little bit of uh, Gen Z before, before we have to bounce here. Uh, so... Uh, a main thing with look at the this generation and what they've had to deal with. Um, school shootings are yeah, what weekly Insane. at this point. Right. It's unbelievable, right. Right? right? So, so they're dealing with that while in school. Whereas, I'm sure we all. I don't know if you if it was big to you guys. I was talking to Tim a little bit about this, but I I remember Columbine like vividly. Like I don't it was remember a it all. Thing. Much, yeah. I was yeah. I was a, a freshman or a junior. What June. year was that? Do you do you know? It was ninety nine. <laughs> Yeah, I was been like eight. I was nine. Yeah, I was, 11, yeah. I was so. a freshman, I believe. But uh, anyway, so th- school shootings fr- from then on, right, s- constantly, right. Mm-hmm. So they're also dealing with like the Me Too movement. Right. The, uh, so there's there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into the workforce because all of like, from what I've heard, a lot of people talk about. It's like, yeah, all these you know sleaze bag you know producers and stuff are getting uh, outed and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But what about the stuff that happens every day at like 
at like McDonald's or just right. in everyday working environments where they they're dealing with that stuff on an everyday basis, which People doesn't that don't get. really have a voice. Right, exactly. Right. So they're dealing with that. They're deal- there's a lot of different things nowadays. It's a lot scarier from what it right. seems nowadays. Mm-hmm. So they're dealing with that. So so what do we need what do we need to do for like hiring wise and all that stuff is what we were going off of. 82% of Gen Zers say social responsibility is an important characteristic of their favorite um, organizations. Right. They have to know like I have to I have to be completely different. If I need to speak to an employee, if I have to bring an employee in to discipline them, I have to have somebody else there with me. Mm-hmm. It has to be, if I have to discipline a female, I have to have another female, female in, right in there with yep. me. Yep. And I mean, even when you, when they go, when this generation is going to go to apply for a job, the one thing you need to tell them, like, they need to feel comfortable. They need to know mm-hmm. you're not going to touch them. Right. That's I mean, so weird, it is, isn't it? It's, it's really but sad that it's come to that. But and right. imagine their mindset of that. Right. Yeah. They're also, we, we, what we were saying, the negatives of what they say, the negatives are about us mm-hmm, as the millennials. Right. We're saying that about them. Okay, so they've grown up. How how much pad time do your kids get? I'm sure more than you're comfortable with. Yeah. We all would say that. Yeah, right. I mean, I've gotten to the point that my kids know they get uh, school days, they get a half hour. And on the weekends, they get two half hour sessions or something. We, we, we set something up because they needed, my oldest is uh, uh, autistic and needs black and white, right. basically. So. So, but they're so used to everything is, is, is a phone, is, a, is a something and it's in their hands. Right. So, but what now, if you look in the workforce, cause they're just starting. So for 96, they're starting to come into the workforce. Mm-hmm. Whereas you and I like working from home was awesome. I, I don't love I didn't being around people luxury. all the time. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, didn't yeah, I didn't either. I have to, I have to travel I and do all that right stuff behind you, <laughs> right. but I, I, I can do some of my stuff from home. So I can do a couple days a week at home, but most of the people who were in offices who could do the stuff from home, they're like, yeah, fucking fuck yeah. Let me do right. this from yeah, home. Right, I can right. do this. Th- I've nothing. been telling you forever. I can do my job from home. That <laughs> right, right. And we're excited about that. Gen Z is not that way. Right. They're so disconnected on a, on a normal basis through if they're doing online or learning or if they're just on their phones all the time and they're texting everybody and it's a different way you have to talk to them. They're craving have working in an environment where they be in a bullpen, where they have daily meetings where you get to meet and talk and talk mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. this stuff before you talk about work, mm-hmm. that type of stuff. So it's a very different environment that, that they're wanting to create the things that we want to get away from. They're craving. Right. So it makes it way different on that. Um, they, um, if you had, like they, we have to lead with a uh, unquestionable integrity and responsibility because yeah. every, like, your, your true self is out there now. This, the, the phone is what created our true self. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you guys, you guys had landlines growing up? Oh, yep. yeah. Okay. Yep. Were you taught how to properly answer a phone? Probably. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, don't I don't know if I ever yeah. did, but. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I was taught specifically. It's like, oh, you, you answer, the, you know, this is the price residence, BJ Price speaking. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I had to be told because you didn't know who was calling. Right. Right. Uh, starting in our generation and forward, we are nothing but our true selves. You talked about that. You don't you don't want to change the podcast because this is who I am. Right. Where did that come from? We weren't taught those values specifically after this stuff started. Tim calls me up. I'm going to answer it because I know it's Tim. Right. I, I, kn- I know how to answer it as well. I'm not going to say, hello, it's BJ or anything right. like right. that. Right. I mean, you, you know who's calling even when like work calls. I could, you know, I, I named them, you know, for, right. uh, Hey Larry, the, you know, what's right. ha- what's happening. It's not you know, formal. Like, yeah, right. there's always it's, a different way that you like, yeah. Cause you know, your audience. It's, it's so, it's so weird too, because I was just thinking actually the other day, um, as far as like being your authentic self and things like that, like no actor or actress anymore goes by like a stage name. Like, very rarely. Mm. Like, unless they've been in it for a long time. Yeah. Like, Brad Pitt might not be named actually Brad Pitt. Right. Mm. But, like, any... Well, that's all SAG rules and stuff, too. Well... I mean, you can't... Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, like, like everybody now, especially podcasts and stuff like that, like, you are you. Like, you're Tim Metcalf. You're BJ Price, you know, and you're... You don't have any of the pseudos or right. anything like that. <laughs> right. And <laughs> it's it's just crazy. It's rappers. <laughs> Yeah, but even then, like, you can just Google their right. name. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's all out there. It's, you know, it's just crazy because, like, before, that that wasn't the case. Like, you could be, like, I could be Jimmy, and I could tell you my name's Jimmy, mm-hmm. and you would never know my name's not Jimmy. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but now it's like, uh, no, you're Adam. Like, <laughs> it's really easy to find out that information. Yeah. And it's just it's just crazy how, how different each generation is. Right. And it... it 
and theirs was when he did that whole thing on Gen Z. Like I honestly, I am not doing this justice. You have to listen to this. He's right. a fantastic speaker and he had the information to back it up. All the studies and everything. It's fantastic. It's, it's a good, it's a good thing to look up. I, I really, it, it changes your perspective. So when I get people coming in that it was mainly like how I do my um, interviews and everything for work, who I'm hiring, how I'm hiring, mm-hmm it's different. It's right. changed and it's made it better. I've been able to, um, it, when I have to discipline or just interact with, even with customers, um, it, I, I do it differently. If I it know the age range, it, it right. does. Right. So this can help in every aspect of your life. Right. Um, there, there's one thing that I think, uh, everybody should look up as well. There's a guy by the name of Simon Sinek. Yeah, and, I know him. He's okay. a great guy. Yes. Yep. Uh, it's called lead with your why. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's a whole thing where it, it, it's uh, this, it is a fantastic, it's very, it's very dated. It's like early nineties video, but you can find it on YouTube. And he talks about the golden circle where it's just like three circles. And what happens is Sounds everybody. kind of culty. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is. I need new friends. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he talks about how leading with the, because it usually goes like what, how, and then why is in the middle. And you always, you know, figure out what needs to happen how to do it, and then, you know, why is this here? Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to start with, why am I doing what am I doing? And then how do I how do I make right. this better, and what do I need to do to get it there? It, it just turned everything on its head, and it it, it does make a, a huge difference. That's massive. That it is. is. Mm-hmm. And, and I, think, I think it was the episode that you're referring to that we did when we were talking about the whys, too, because, like, my whole thing, like you said, like, I got to know why we're doing it this way. Yeah. And even if I don't agree with you, if you give me a valid yeah. why, I yeah. could be like, I disagree, but I kind of see where you're coming from. We can do it that way. Yeah, just give yeah. me understanding. Right. right. But the the because I said so is oh, completely nonsense. out the window now. You cannot do that anymore. Um, and I think rightfully so. Because mm-hmm. I, I got to know why I'm doing something a certain way. If If you come at me with like BS and it's because I said so, nope. Like I'm yeah. just not going to do it. And I've, I've done that at jobs before where I've had leadership say like, well, we got to do it this way. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then I turn around and I'm like, I'm not fucking doing it that mm-hmm. way. I'm doing it this way. And then a month later they're like, how are you getting these results? And I'm like, cause I'm not following <laughs> that idiot. just saying <laughs> random stuff. Right. Like in, uh, we, we were definitely part of a world now where it's think for yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that changes everything. And that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that we're getting mm-hmm. to that point. And I think the, the, the saving thing about our generation is, and we can kind of get off a, on a tangent on this one. We can or we can't. It doesn't matter. But um, we're focused on mental health. Mm-hmm. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's, it's very important to, to our generation and the generation after us generation before us just didn't doesn't care, about care. No, mm-hmm. and i don't nope. know if if they just didn't care or if the information just wasn't out there i'm sure that's i think there was probably i think a little there's bit a big weakness yeah. in mental health is is where it was viewed um right even like generations before like my grandmother on my dad's side had a bunch of mental illness and i think my dad talked a little bit about it in the episode but didn't get help because you didn't right. Like mm-hmm. if somebody found out you were exist. getting up. Yeah. Right. And even, even if the, the, the little bit that did exist, if you went to it, you were an outcast. Right. Yeah. You're a nutcase at that yeah. point. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I, I'm glad we're, we're getting to that point. I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, people are taking mental health seriously. And this shit and is like serious, that. dude. I mean, yeah. I'm me personally not dealing with it, but dealing with it at home, man, like right. it's, well, I, it's, no joke. it's crazy, right. man. I majored in psychology because of that, like mm. because I was diagnosed at a young age with being bipolar. I don't really think I am. I think the guy just didn't know what he was talking about or <laughs> something because it was like a one time meeting on blast. for a half hour. And I was like 12 mm. and I was just like a, an angry little kid. Um, or super quiet. You're just like, fucking with the doctor. Right. And, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, you're bipolar. And I'm like, no, the fuck I'm not. You're but, bipolar. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was like 11 or 12 and I'm like, I don't know what this means. So right? I researched it and I was like, this is kind of cool. And then I just slowly got it, started getting into psychology. Um, but yeah, mental health is super important to me. Um, and I'm, I'm glad again that, that our generation is, taking that seriously for sure. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I mean, you can see it even in the workers. 
when you have, we, we did get, um, with COVID, we got like some mental health days mm -hmm. and you see each generation, they're like, well, that's bullshit, right. mental health day. And then you look at us, it's like, that's kind of, uh, maybe right. we'll take I the day and just that. not yeah, doing yeah. something. Right. It's like, it, it was just interesting because, you know, it, it, in the hardware business, I mean, we have everybody because like, we have mainly like re retired old dudes who want to work for a hardware store. And then we have, you know, just anybody else we can get to hire mm -hmm. right. all that. And now with COVID, we actually got like a ton of different, like, cause we were considered essential. You needed right. the hardware store yep. open for stuff. And uh, so we got a ton of people. We got like people from hair salons, bartenders, all this other stuff. So it's like a weird, um, weird mix. Weird di yeah. Dynamic, and, it, and it's yeah. really cool. Cause I've like learned a lot of just, interesting things just yeah. from it's like well what'd you do before this oh my gosh that's uh, it's right. talking to him about it. it's really cool that's awesome that's awesome um mm. well we appreciate you guys coming on absolutely uh, thank yeah. you guys thank, thank you for yeah, having us that was a blast it was, it was great i uh i was actually thinking before this i'm like this is the first time we've had four people on <laughs> but it's not true actually we had the greener grass yeah, podcast greener, on yeah. um but that was before we did video so you guys are our first um hey. dual <laughs> video guests yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, we appreciate you guys uh, coming on. Definitely check out Teach a Dummy podcast. Yes, I know sir. you guys are on Apple. I know you're on Spotify. Are you anywhere else? Um, yeah, I Pandora. Think um, yeah, we should be on Pandora, Stitcher. Nice. Um, okay. We will be on Amazon shortly, I believe. I just submitted. Okay. okay. So. Sweet. And then any uh, any social media to plug or anything like that. Uh, Facebook is probably the best way, just because I'm that early millennial and I don't. Right. Twitter, I don't do right. any of that other right. stuff. So I do Twitter, but it's super yeah. hard to like even you know promote yourself on Twitter right. or anything like that. Um, Instagram, we're a little a little bit active. I'm not super great at Instagram either. Yeah, <laughs> but Those it's at teach <laughs> underscore a underscore dummy on right. Instagram. It's it it's Instagram so much easier when you have video to pull yeah. from. Yeah, oh, it makes my life so much easier. Yep. Um, but then, and your guys' episodes, I think, come out Fridays, right? Yes, we, we record on Mondays, and we try to have it up uh, uh, in the evening on Fridays. Okay. So, cool. and yep. I, I don't know if we're going to do bonus episodes and when they're going to come out. I have no idea at this point. Okay. <laughs> well, right on. Yeah, definitely check out Teach a Dummy podcast. You guys are definitely one of my favorite podcasts to listen to every single week. Thank well, you, good. Sir. Now um, we're done. We don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> right, so right. We're, we're <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming on, and... Uh, have a good rest of your night. See you. Until next week. Peace.